I've got to get to the office. Where's this big surprise you've got for me? Coming right up, Dad. Are you ready? Come on, I'm ready. Yoda lady. Full of lead, you write for 87 years without refilling. Well, how do you like it? Oh, it's swell, baby. But I've been to tell you, I'm afraid we can't go to that dude ranch. But, Dad, you said we were going. It was definite. I know, honey. But things are a little grim at the office right now. But we've got to go. I've got my new outfit and everything. I'm sorry, Margie, but Mr. Honeywell thinks I should stick around. Investors used to be happy if you showed them a profit. Now you've got to run a celebrity service on the side. You haven't got a Grand Duke or a Lady Bullfighter up your sleeve, have you? What are you talking about? Oh, it's that new Conway Staub investment outfit. Every time one of our big clients comes up for renewal, they dig up some famous personality to impress him, throw a fancy shindig, and poof, there goes another Honeywell card account. Great. A couple of accounts go poof, and our week at the ranch has to go poof. Well, more than just a couple, honey. That's the trouble. And the Stegmuller business comes up for renewal this week. Mrs. Stegmuller? Well, she's one of your biggest accounts. Yes, and just the type to be swayed by one of Conway and Staub's big names. If we lose that account, it'll be the poof to end all poofs. That dude ranch will be there next year. Maybe we can go then. Oh, good morning, Mr. Odette. Good morning, Mr. Albright. Good morning, Margie. Good morning. What's the matter, Margie? Something wrong? Yes, poof. Poof? Poof. <laughs> oh, poof! <laughs> Hi, I'm getting my vitamin D the hard way. I haven't seen you for so long, I thought you'd given up and gone back to Alabama. Oh, not even a little bit of it. Little old Jenny just kept on feuding away at those stage producers. And finally, I've got something. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Margie, honey. Of course, you're going to have to help me. Well, how can I help you? Remember how you used to fund me about my accent? Well, honey child, I never fund you about your little old accent. Not even one little old bit of it. Of course, I've lost most of my accent now. But I'm glad you can still sound like I used to. And that's what you've got to do for me. What? This morning, I got a telegram from my daddy. He wants me to go meet an old friend of the family who's arriving today from Europe. You know, Southern hospitality. But I got to start rehearsing for my first part in one of the biggest little only shows in town. So all I want you to do is go and meet this gentleman at the hotel and make like you're me. But, Jenny, I couldn't fool anybody. I don't look like you. Oh, that don't matter, Margie, honey. Oh, Mr. Brown Caddy hasn't seen me for nearly ten years. I was just a little old child. Did you say Brown Caddy? Your godfather, the man you used to talk about in school? That's him. Daddy's buddy chum. Ever since the First World War. Anthony Brown Caddy. Famous Italian opera star. Oh, Margie, honey, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> you just happened to catch me at the right time. When things go poof, Get yourself a famous Italian opera star. That's what I always say. But, Jenny, what if he asks me questions about the old plantation? Nah, honey. Don't get the idea I knew I could talk you into it. But on the way over, I just happened to jot down some of my family history. Well, Jenny, I can't pull this out every time he asks me a question. Silly. Remember how some of the kids at school used to get ready for exams? <sighs> That's the way, honey. When I graduated, it took me two months to get the ink off my fingers. Virginia Clark. That's me, sir. Come in, come in, darling. Your papa sent me telegram say that you come to see me. Oh, cara mia, tanto tempo che non ti vedo. Eh? You just grow bigger. Don't change a little bit from the last time I saw you. I could recognize you any time, any place. How's that for a memory, huh? That's a right big little old memory. <laughs> and how's everything at the home? Papa, Papa, all right, fine. And uh, Uncle Walter. Uncle Walter? <laughs> He's fine, too. <laughs> Still has the same old hobby, huh? Hobby? 
Tonight you come back and we have a nice dinner together, eh? Huh? Well, shut my mouth. You shut the mouth. How's that gonna eat? I just meant I've been counting on having dinner with you all. Oh. I have some friends that are dying to meet you. Could you have dinner with them? A little party afterwards? Doesn't that sound nice? Well, yes, except that I, I had to see my American manager. But I know, I know what I'm going to do. I'll invite her here for a dinner. We talk at the business. Then you come here and we go to the party. Hokey dokey, hokey dokey. Huh? That's just wonderful. Will you be ready at eight? I'll pick you up in my car. That's a fine. That's a fine. <laughs> What are you going to do? Sit still and let Conway and stop take all our accounts? Mr. Honeywell, I've told you before, I'm an investment counselor, not a booking agent. And besides, I don't know any celebrities. Now, just a minute. Don't raise your voice to me or I'll call Mr. Todd in. You'll have two of us on you. Well, what am I supposed to do? Call up a lot of movie stars? <laughs> Time out. Margie, we're in no mood for kidding around. Come back later. No, Margie, you stay and kid around. Then there'll be two of you who are very good at kidding around. Mr. Honeywell, now you listen to me. Sit down. You too. Margie, I said for you to come back later. I come in here with the answer to your problem and you tell me to go. Well, so long. <laughs> what do you mean the answer to our problem? Yes, Margie, dear. Now what's on your pretty little mind? Go back and sit down. Both of you. Yes. Betty, this is Miss Albright. Get Mrs. Stegmuller for me, will you? Yes, Miss Albright. Margie, what are you doing? Things are bad enough. Now, don't start clowning around with Mrs. Stegmuller. <laughs> relax, gentlemen, relax. Margie, give me that phone. Go ahead, Miss Albright. Hello, Miss Albright's daughter. My father placed your name at the top of the list because he was sure you'd want to meet his guest of honor, Mr. Anthony Bronchetti. Well, how wonderful. Fine. See you tonight, Mrs. Stegmuller. Bye. Honey, you've played tricks on me before, but this one can ruin me. And me. And Mr. Todd, too. Gentlemen, I've just come from Mr. Bronchetti's hotel, and I assure you he'll be at our place tonight. Oh, baby, how did you ever do it? Well, it doesn't matter how I did it. I'll say this for it. It was almost ethical. <laughs> oh, Dad, when Mr. Bronchetti arrives tonight, we'll be playing uh, sort of a game. A game? What kind of a game? It's called, Just Don't Ask Any Questions, when he calls me Ginya and I talk Southern. And you'll get your renewal and I'll get to go to the dude branch. Dolly! Tom, my old friend, Tom. How's it come are you here? You're supposed to be a home in Alabama. Well, I'll try a wire Ginny to meet ya. I got thinking how long it had been, and, well, so I just got myself on a plane, and here I am. <laughs> you certainly surprised me. Tony, hey, your daughter was here, as you told her. She's a very nice girl. She's coming back tonight to take me to a party. <laughs> well, I called her apartment, but I didn't get an answer. I'm right glad to know she came to see you. I tell you what, Tom, you stay, and when she come back, you jump out and give her a big surprise. <laughs> then we all go to the party. Hokey dokey, hokey dokey. Well, now, sir, that sounds like a right smart idea. 
she's gonna get a very big a kick out of this. <laughs> You're already, aren't you? <laughs> I'm all already. But first, I have a little surprise for you that's uh, gonna knock you over. Well, if there's anything I just adore, it's a little surprise. Why? Ah, in a moment, you'll know it right away. Hokey dokey, come out. And uh, hokey dokey, turn around. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Well, gentlemen, what's the surprise? Christopher Columba. Everybody wanted to play the gag on me today. Go on, give it a big a kiss to Papa. <laughs> I'm not happy to see you, Papa. I'll see you gentlemen in about 50 years. Well, you just hold on then, young lady. This year girl's not my daughter. Not your daughter. I'm sorry, Mr. Bronchetti. I didn't mean any harm. But please don't ask me any questions. I'm in enough trouble without getting in the middle between you and Ginny. Well, where's my daughter? What's the meaning of this? I know, I know all of the time she's no genius. She no look like her at all. <laughs> well, I'm going over to where my daughter lives. Whatever's going on here, I aim to get to the bottom of it. I go with you. I go with you. At the least I will know why there's a little dog that goes to college. <laughs> Mrs. Stegmiller, come right in. Let me, let me take your wrap. Thank you. This promises to be so exciting, Mr. Albright. Has he arrived yet? He'll be here shortly. My daughter's driving him over from the hotel. Please go right in. Mr. Honeywell will introduce you to the other guests. Hello? Dad, I've got to tell you something. What? Mrs. Stegmiller just arrived. She's all agog about meeting Mr. Branchetti, so hurry him over as fast as you can. She's already there? Mr. Honeywell's here, too, with a couple of other clients he brought along. Margie, baby, you've made me the happiest father in the world. And now, what is it you want to tell me? I wanted to tell you that Mr. Bronchetti won't... won't... He won't be there at exactly 8.30. We got tied up in some traffic and had a blowout and some other things. That's okay, baby. Just get here as quickly as possible. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Margie, dear. I'm in an awful jam. I tried to unpoof the poof, and now the unpoof is poofed, and... Oh, Mrs. Odette, do you think somehow we could fix me up to look like a 200-pound baritone opera singer? Oh, that sounds like fun. Uh-huh. You get the clothes. And I'll dash over to the war surplus store and find something to stuff you with. What? A bald wig and a mustache. What? They might ask me to sing. <gasps> I never thought of that. Well, just in case, get Ron Teddy's record, Funiculi Funicula. I know that one well. And we'll play it on my small Victrola near the terrace door. Oh, blessed me, this is going to be a ball. <laughs> Now, put this on. But the pants are ten sizes too big. That's what we have this for. What is that? I don't know what they call it, but the strong man said that if you just press this bell, it blows up all by itself. Oh? Here. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Would you like another cocktail, Mrs. Stegmiller? No, thank you. Excuse me. Now, Mrs. Stegmuller, if you renew with us, I promise you the service we will Really, get. Mr. Honeywell, I'm not here to discuss business. Are you sure Mr. Branchetti is coming? Oh, as I said before, Mrs. Stegmuller, my daughter phoned that they'd been delayed. Now, as I was saying... Yeah. Oh, here they are now. Excuse me. Welcome, Mr. Branchetti. How do you do, Mr. Albright? Oh, your daughter, she not to be here till much later. That car of hers is a stall, and this nice neighbor pick me up. And that, I think, takes care of the explanation as to my being here. <laughs> nice lady. 
Say, Mr. Albright, I think I make it a good suggestion for the day. Why you don't buy your daughter a nice new car? She's an awfully good kid. <laughs> Maybe I'll do just that. Come, I get the right to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present Mr. Anthony Branchetti. I have one guest who is especially interested in meeting you. Mr. Stegmiller, may I present Mr. Anthony Branchetti. How do you do, Mr. Branchetti? <laughs> I'm happy to meet the fine lady who deal with a good firm like a Honeywell and Paul. Yeah, I'm Honeywell. Come with me, you fine lady. I want to steal you away all for myself. <laughs> Pardon my being personal, Mr. Bronchetti, but your speaking voice seems so much higher than your singing voice. Oh, that, yes. So that's the most interesting thing. Well, what's the reason? Some of people have uh, what you call two voices, no? Like, uh, like a, you, you, Charlie McCarthy. Um, what an interesting decoration, may I? Of course. Why, it's exquisite. Well, I'm glad that you like it. Good for me on the momento. Everything all right, Mr. Brachetti? Just a fine, just a fine. Yes, ma'am. I can't put it off a moment longer. I just must ask you to sing. No, oh, Mrs. Stegmuller, please. My voice is not so good tonight. Oh, you're being modest. Friends, friends, how would you like to have Mr. Bronchetti sing for you? I have no music, Mrs. Stegmuller. Oh, my goodness, I never thought of that. Do something, all right. Don't let her be disappointed. Couldn't you do just a little something with our music? Uh, Mr. Branchetti, we have quite a few classical records here. I'll put the music on the Victrola and you do the singing. I'll see what we have. But please, uh, Mr. O'Bright, uh, surely there must be somebody here who plays at the piano. You. You play at the piano, see? Oh, yes, yes. A little. I'm glad to. A real honor. Records on the machine. Oh, this is going to be so thrilling. Uh, Shall we sit down? What'll it be, Mr. Branchetti? Uh, something like uh, finicula, finicula. Oh, that's a fine, oh, that's a fine. Uh, I always like to sing near the balcony. I like lots of fresh air when I sing. <laughs> Oh, 
for Jeff Kilpon for him. Oh, Mrs. Stegmuller, please. Oh, Marge, honey, we thought you all might be in trouble and needed help. We all come to tell. Jeannie has explained. Why are you dressed this way? I was just trying to help. I mean, I was just trying to help my father get a big account, and the whole thing blew up. Blew up? Huh? Now, please, listen to me, Mrs. Stegmuller. My daughter just does these things. You've made a fool of me. I'll never do business with you again. Ladies and gentlemen, and Mrs. Stegmuller, may I present the real, live, genuine, in the flesh, Mr. Anthony Bronchetti. <laughs> Guarda, lady, that's a mine. Ah, me la vedo bella ricorre per il marito, io con la studente. Margie, how did you ever manage it? To tell you the truth, I don't know. All I can say is, come and stay. Come stay? What does that mean? I don't know what it means, but right now anything in Italian sounds awfully good to me. 